Snap and Pinterest both uh, falling in after hours trading. Um, revenue decline on advertising weakness. We didn't see this with Alphabet, but we are seeing this with Snap. We didn't see this with Meta, but we are seeing this with Snap. What does that tell you? Well, so one metric that stood out for Snap was ad pricing was down 18%. Now we saw that with Meta as well. It was down 17%, but the difference was Meta's impression growth was 26%, whereas in the case of Snap, it was 10%. So what it shows you is the scale players mm -hmm. with distribution advantage are executing better because they have the scale across family of apps. And in the case of the smaller players like Snap and Pinterest, ad pricing is decline, uh, declining across the board. Everyone is suffering. Mm -hmm. It's just they have the scale and that's why they are able to drive the impressions, whereas the smallers aren't. So well, market leadership wins out and niche kind of loses out in this case. Absolutely. I, th I think, and, and it goes back to the point about discretionary ad spending. Everyone is paring back on their discretionary ad spend. Their advertisers are still putting money to work are the high performing channels like Google search. In the case of Meta, clearly it's higher performing than a Snapchat or a Pinterest. What's the future though? I mean, I feel like this has been the story for them for quite some time. I haven't seen the growth in Snap. I know Pinterest has maybe fared a little bit better, but they've never achieved that scale. And I don't understand what actually gets them to achieve that scale at this point. Well, and, and the industry is changing. Uh, look at the pivot to videos. Yeah. Because of TikTok, everyone is doubling down on video content. Well, it's harder for these guys. One, they don't have the creator base. They don't pay out the uh, to creators like YouTube does. Mm. So their business model needs to change. Yeah. And also with uh, generative AI, things are changing. Now you have to invest more. That's what Meta called out yesterday. They are making those investments in generative AI. But that's not cheap. That's not cheap, I, I mean, exactly. Meta, Meta has it, although you know, some would question whether they should spend it. But we mm -hmm. know that they have the pockets, they have the cash flow to do it. I don't know, I haven't looked at the, uh, the cash flow statement for Snap and Pinterest in a while, but I'm gonna assume it's not nearly uh, as healthy as some of the other companies. Yeah, these guys yeah. don't invest in their data centers. They actually rent the capacity from uh, uh, Amazon uh, and Microsoft. So that's killer. That's everything, killer. <laughs> all the infrastructure workloads add yeah. up and you know hurt their gross margin. So yeah. that's why it, the scale players have an advantage, you're right. So once upon a time, Snap did things that what was then Facebook would look at and say, oh, I like that. That's innovative. That's, you're, you bring in the younger users. I'm going to copy that and do it at scale and do it better. Is Snap doing that anymore? Well, so Snap was the innovator with stories format, and then Meta copied that. I, I think Snap is trying to integrate, you know, LLM, my AI. They just talked about that. But look, I, I think because this is a scale game now and you need the infrastructure resources, and we are in a down environment where they are pressured to improve their profitability, mm -hmm. minimize cash burn, the odds are stacked against them. They should them. do more of this. You know, during the pandemic, you know, I had to do like my own <laughs> makeup, and I just, I was literally just on YouTube for like two straight days watching women like show me how to do makeup. Now you here. can go on Snap and I, do yeah, it. Yeah, I pay for that. You know, what about Pinterest? We, I feel like we barely talk about this company because I'm not even sure who uses it <laughs> or what it's used for. What is it's Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to sound, um, I don't know, rude about it, but what is its purpose of being? Well, so look, during the pandemic, they had people going to the platform every day. Uh -huh. Now their daily active user base isn't growing because people don't feel the need to go to the platform every day, and that's why the user growth has stagnated. Yeah. I mean, look at Meta. They grew 4% users of a 3 billion daily active user base. Which is incredible. In this case, uh, they can't grow their user base because people just don't feel the need to go to the platform. Uh, before we let you go, I, I do want to go just go back real quickly to ad spending, uh, just seeing uh, some headlines uh, from Amazon, Andy Jassy kind of talking about how AI is going to help fuel uh, some of its uh, the growth that it's seen in the ad business here. There's this idea that ads, at least in terms of the search and how we get things through social, is going to be completely changed by the AI results. Is Snap and Pinterest, are they in a position at all to actually benefit from that? Even if they don't have it internally, do they have the capacity to license? Well, I would differentiate between Snap and Pinterest because Snap has a daily active user base of 100 million in the US. Mm. Compare that to Pinterest, it's just 20 million. Mm. So clearly, if you are a platform with a scale of Snap, you know, 500 million uh, monthly active users, you can think of B2B partnerships, you can layer shopping. I don't think ads is just gonna cut it. You have two scale players and then Amazon, the third one. You, you can build scale in ads, but you can layer shopping, and that's why they have to diversify their revenue, the smaller ones.